2019, and I'm here today to interview Francis Jones. This is one of the interviews that's part of the oral history project of the museum as we talk about the old one-room schools in Rehoboth. Francis, tell a little bit about yourself. I'm Francis Jones, and I attended the Hornbein School. I started there in 1927. Let's start and really kind of pretend that it's a day of school. Um, how long a walk did you and Clarence have? Well, not that far. I really don't know. About five minutes, maybe, is it? You're not that far. Oh, you, five or ten minutes. Oh, probably five minutes. I thought maybe you were asking me the mileage, which no, I didn't know. which is not, it's not very far. No, Francis no. and um, Clarence live very close to the Hornbein School. And uh, what did you see along the way? Were there other houses? Were there other buildings as you walked to school? No, there was just one house with, just with a little um, country store. Tell a little bit about that country store. First of all, who were the uh, people that ran that store? Uh, the people that ran the store was Myron E. Reese. And uh, you, you could buy penny candy, you could buy bread, crackers, anything that, wasn't, uh, that was not perishable for a while. Can you remember stopping at the school off? I mean, at the store often? Yes, because I, I was, uh, the, the wife, Mrs. Reese, was my favorite person. We got along very nicely. Clarence and I were the only two kids on the street. This would be yeah. more or less at the southern end of um, yes. Hornbine Road, well, almost to the Swansea Line. Well, all the other children came from Spring Street. It's true, Spring Street, and then the the northern part of uh, uh, Hornby. Uh, the Line. northern part of yeah. Can you remember what your favorite candy was? If you had a penny or two to buy candy, can you remember what you bought? Well, I know I used to buy, like to chew gum. <laughs> okay, and the same with children today. All right. Um, I've asked you about the things you saw, just one other house, the country store. What did you carry with you? What did you take with you to school? Just myself. You, so you didn't carry a slate or you didn't carry no, any no. Um, pencils? And tell then about um, lunchtime because you live so close to school. What did you and Clarence do every day at lunchtime? Well, we would go home and have sit down. Mother would have our lunch ready. and. Uh, she would watch the time to make sure that we wasn't late. How long did you have? How long was we that? We had an hour for lunch. And you had to be back at school? Yeah, we had to be back at school. Can you remember when you reached the schoolyard, um, what, was, what were the activities that were going on in the schoolyard, whether it was in the morning or after lunch? Well, after lunch, the, the children were all getting ready to go into school. So, I could remember the bell ring and it was time for us to go to school. So, really, you didn't have a lot of chance to play no. with the other children? No, we didn't. Uh, the bell is uh, a bell that we have at the schoolhouse right now. It has a clear, loud sound, doesn't yes. it? It does. We're lucky to have it. Francis, as we begin to talk about your time at the Hornbein School this morning, I know that you came to the schoolhouse under circumstances that were a little bit different than most children. Tell about how you came to Hornbein School at a very young age. Well, when I was five years old, my brother was in first grade, and he would come home to lunch. And he would go back to school, and I would cry my eyes out because I couldn't go. So my mother went to the teacher, Mrs. Hopkins, and she said to her, uh, this little girl here wants to go to school. And the teacher sa said, well, all right, she can come and a every afternoon as a guest and sit quietly. So that was what I would do. Now, as you sat there as a guest, what was happening? Oh, I was uh, taking everything in as far as education was concerned. So that when you really were old enough to come to school, when you were the proper age, what happened to you? Because you'd already learned quite a bit just by being a guest. Well, when I started in the first grade, I was remembered everything that had gone on. So I would help the younger ones that had just come in. I would help them with their reading and writing, and the teacher would let me do this because I was helping her so she could tend to other students. 
So then it's a, a little bit unusual because you really advanced quicker than a child might have. So tell the circumstances of how that came to be, how you went along in the grades without really spending a whole year at each grade level early on. Well, when I went back to attend the first grade, um, I was so far advanced in knowing what was going on that at the end of December, the teacher and the superintendent, Mr. Whitman, called me up to their desk and they gave me an oral exam and I remember reading that first grade book right through. So the, the results was they said that I could go from June until December, first grade, and then January until the next June, second grade. And then when I go back to school for the second year, I was promoted right into the third grade. Therefore, I caught up with my brother. You're, and you're leaving out my favorite part of the story because isn't it that the superintendent put you on his knee? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> he did. And so, yes. And he asked you other questions, I think, too, didn't he? Yeah, a lot, a lot of things about, you know, arithmetic and spelling and, and especially I remember reading that first grade book. We'll talk a little bit more about your time at school. Tell a little bit about Mrs. Hopkins. Tell her name again and tell what your memories are of her, what she was like as a teacher and so on. Well, her name was Esther Hopkins. She was very kind and gentle. I never heard a cross word from her. I, and I never heard her, um, I don't know how to put this, chastise any child. Because we talked, so you don't remember anybody having no. to be punished? No, I don't. I don't. So Francis, I know because you started school early, you had a special relationship with Mrs. Hopkins. T tell a little bit about that. Well, you know, being the only girl on the street and all the people around me were elderly, although they were wonderful. Uh, she was more or less the younger one that I cling to. And of course, I became teacher's pet. And how did you, what kind of relationship did you have that let you know that she was? Well, she let me do a lot of little things that the other children did. She wouldn't have them do, such as put the, um, pick up the papers mm -hmm. and um, put the books away. I did all of that for her. And when you're young and you can help the teacher, I know it makes you feel really special. Yes. Yes. So, did you understand from the time that you were really little that Mrs. Hopkins favored you a little yes, bit? Yes, I, I did. Yes? Do you, how do you think your classmates felt about it? Do you think I don't think it bothered them. I was, I was liked by everybody. I can believe that. I can believe that. All right. Yeah, I know. She does. She does say that she was teacher's pet. And I love the story about her sitting on the superintendent's knee. I wish I had a video of that. <laughs> yes. Right. And reading, going through that first grade Frida right through it. I'll never forget that. It's an amazing accomplishment because uh, children were not exposed to books or to even probably learning their letters or numbers. So it's an amazing accomplishment at a very young age. What were some of the games that you and Clarence would play, even if you didn't play them in the schoolyard? Do you remember some of the old games that you would play? Or I don't know, because on the farm, I know you all had to work hard. But when you had time to play, what did you play? Oh, hopscotch. Mm -hmm. and, and with Clarence, it was play ball. Did you have a doll when you were little? You I had a doll? doll and a carriage. That was the only toy that I ever had. Was it a doll that someone had made, or did it come from Somebody a store? Somebody gave it to us brought it to my mother and gave it to us. The hop, when you played hopscotch, were you drawing the lines in the dirt with a stick or did you actually, yes? Yes, we, that's what we would do. And using a stone to mark yes. your place. Okay. So now Mrs. Hopkins has rung the bell and you go into Hornbine School. Tell what you remember, how the school looked, what was there. Well, everyone would get busy and we'd all have our own work to do. And she would go around and make sure that we were, we were doing what we were supposed to do. She'd vi visit each uh, class separately. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the students um, 
even, I know you advanced quickly through first and second grade. Do you remember any of the students who were actually at your grade level with you? Yeah, Walter Bond Elevens. And he was your age? And yes, I remember sitting down with him and helping him to read. Yes, I know that. We'll talk about that. I know that's one of your favorite memories. How was the classroom divided? Was it girls on one side, boys on the other? No, no, we all no. had, um, well, each grade had a separate section, but the boys and girls were together. Okay, all right. So it was probably easier for Mrs. Hopkins yes. to work that way. All right. How many different grades do you think were in the room? I know that at Hornbine School, throughout the years, grades one through eight were taught. When you were there, was there a student at every grade level, one through eight, do you think? I don't remember eighth grades. I only remember to sixth grades. To sixth grade. There was a time, certainly, when there were eighth grades there, but I'm not so sure as the years went on um, how, if every grade level was, um, was filled. How many children do you think were in the room, all grades, all together? Do you think there were 15, 20? Probably 20. Probably 20 or so. All right. Um, how did Mrs. Hopkins begin the day? When we do a day of school today, we raise the flag and say a prayer. Was the flag raised? Yes, we would salute the flag, and she would say a prayer. Okay. Uh, did you sing a song, a patriotic song? I don't really remember that. Okay, and so once opening exercises were begun, then everybody got to work. All right. What um, subjects? Can you remember the subjects that you studied? Spelling, reading, arithmetic. Any social studies, any geography or history? Well, there was uh, history and social studies, but I was more for reading and arithmetic and uh, spelling. And spelling. We'll talk about spelling. And you have beautiful handwriting, so I'm thinking that handwriting was taught. Oh, yes. Because even today, you have beautiful handwriting. So, your favorite subject? Spelling. Tell about spelling, because uh, uh, something special happened for you every year with spelling. Tell that story. Well, at the end of the report card, every time you'd get your report card, she would um, have like a spelling bee. And if you got all the words right, she would buy a little, a little small storybook for you. You would get a little small storybook, which I got every one. Yes, a good speller. So someone who looked forward to those spelling bees. All right. Do you remember, because uh, we know that from time to time, I mean, Mrs. Hopkins was on her own each day, but from time to time the superintendent came to call. Do you remember those visits? Yes. And would he speak to the children when he came? Well, he, he would first sit down at the desk and talk with her mm -hmm. about things, I, uh, you know, for school. Mm -hmm. And then he would go around and say hello to each ch child. Do you remember, was it, uh, did um, the mm -hmm. students get nervous when he came? Did everybody want to be on their best behavior? Yeah, well, generally, we was mostly generally quiet. There was never no trouble in school when I went there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if uh, someone didn't behave, it was uh, a small offense probably, and Mrs. Hopkins was able to take care of it? As far as I can remember. Okay. What if you didn't feel well? There must have been times when either you or Clarence or other children did not feel well. Do you know what Mrs. Hopkins was able to do? I really don't remember that. I don't ever remember being sick. Is that true? So you don't ever remember spending no. a day at home? No. No. And if I was sick, I probably covered it up because I had to get there. You wanted to go to school. Can you remember a favorite story, maybe even when you were a young girl a little bit older and you were reading a lot on your own? Do you remember having a favorite story? I really can't say. Okay. But it, something may um, come to you. And um, I know that you and Clarence, we talked about lunchtime, that you walked back and forth for, um, for lunch every day. And we've talked about games. What were some of the jobs that um, the boys and girls, we'll talk about your mother in a moment, but what were some of the jobs that the boys and girls had to help Mrs. Hopkins out? Oh, uh, do the race, race the boards mm -hmm. and clap the races. Mm -hmm. Okay. From what I can remember. Okay. Same kind of jobs that boys and girls like to do today, too. 
Your mother had a very special connection to the school, so tell what your mother did every day to help the teacher out. Well, my mother was the janitor, and she would get up real early in the morning and go up to school. She'd take a five-gallon milk can of water and put it in. They had a crock, some kind of a crock with a little spigot, and she would put the water in there. And then she would empty the uh, waste baskets of paper into the stove, and she would light the fire. And then she would go to the woodshed and bring the wood in to the wood box. And then she would sweep the floor. And then she would put the flag up. And the flagpole at that time was up at the top of the school. Mm. And then she would get home so to get our lunch so we could get back up to school. I remember the flag was right over the front door. Yes. Part of that flagpole is still there. When school was over for the day, could you and Clarence go home and play, or did you have chores to no, do? No, we had to go home and do chores, especially strawberry time. We had to pick a hundred baskets of strawberries that day. Did you earn any money for picking all those oh, boxes? Uh, n not from my mother and father, no, but from neighbors, yes, we would get a penny a basket more gum to buy at Reese's store. You could have those pennies to buy gum at Reese's store, I'm thinking. When Hornbein School closed, where did you go to school? When uh, I, I completed six grades at the Hornbein School, and then we went to Box Street in Swansea. And then finally to the high school, yes, yeah, we to took, Joseph Case High at School. At Box Street, we took seventh and eighth grade, and then we went to Joseph Case High School in Swansea. We stayed there, I stayed there four years. I was 16 when I graduated from in 1939 from Joseph Case High School. You told me this morning, I know your favorite memories when you were young and at Hornbine School were spelling and reading and helping other children to read, but what did you tell me this morning, your favorite memories of uh, being in Swansea at school? Well, I, I took the uh, cooking lessons and the sewing lessons, and I learned all those things very well. I enjoyed it. I did the other things too, typing and shorthand I liked, but I enjoyed my cooking and sewing. Now, what other memories do you have that I may not have asked you about? Is there anything else concerning school that you can think about that you'd like to tell that we haven't talked about this morning? Can I ask one question? Mm. How, did, how did you get to the high school from the house? Uh, we we rode the um, bus driven by Preston Baker. Would come from Swansea by my house. See, I lived at the end of Rehoboth, beginning of Swansea. So he would come from Swansea, pass my house for Rehoboth, turn down Baker Road, get back into Swansea again, and then take us to the Box Street School. So it was a school bus. It was a school bus with no heat. No, nothing. And I remember when it was snowing, the we girls used to put our hands on the windshield to thaw it so he could see to drive. And what year would that have been then? Um, well, four years. So probably like about 1940, 1941. What year did you graduate 1939. from 1939. You graduated from high school, so yeah. that's right. So uh, it might have been 1934, or 35, yeah. whatever. Wow, amazing. Okay, so any other school memories, your own personal school memories, either Hornbine School or going to school in Swansea? Well, no, I know I was very happy. I know that Those you were, were the best days of my life. You were a good student, I know, and you liked to learn. And When school was over, when school days were over, um, what happened then for you? Did you go to work immediately? No, there was no work around, but I used to help all the neighbors. With uh, farming chores or with housework? With chores? housework. Housework. Did we, did we mention, did we ask you for what year you were born? 1922. And I started school in 1925 when I was five years old as a guest. And do you still live in the same house that you grew up in? Uh, no, I was born in Swansea. Okay. And I came to this house 
on Hornbine Road when I was 18 months. Okay. And I lived there until I got married when I was 25. Mm -hmm. And then I went to live in Swansea for a year. And then I came back to the house next door to my homestead. And I've been there ever since. Did you do other kinds of work? Did you raise a family? Did you? Well, I, I married and I had two children, okay. a, a son and a daughter. And what are their names? My son is Raymond mm -hmm. L. Jones, and my daughter is Mary Lou Drown. And uh, do they still live around here? Yes. Um, and I must say my son graduated from Brown University. Yes, that's a, wow. a great story. Fra I mean, w let's say this, because Frances and I talked about this the other day. Frances would have loved to have gone on to school. She was a good yes. student and so on, but there was just absolutely no way to do it, no money to do it. But um, I think she was able to see her son go to a wonderful yes. uh, university. And, and again, did you, what was your husband's name? Raymond L. Jones. Raymond. So Raymond is named exactly for your husband. Yeah, but yes. Junior on the end. Yes. Right. right. And you said that the home you live in now is 275 years old? At least. It was the Case Estates. The Case Estates? Alfred. Alfred C. Case. Is there anything else you can tell us about the house that you know of? Who else well, lives it's there? Well, before I lived there, years ago, the Bakers lived there. Okay. Are these the Bakers of Baker Slaughterhouse? Yes. yes. Oh. It's a wonderful, um, the outbuilding, where you park your car, I mean, that was a barn and an outbuilding. Is that original to the house? Yes, that was original, yeah. Mm. And there's wonderful land, I have to say. Um, Frances still farms, and there's still wonderful land where she... Um, grows her vegetables every yes. year. She's still going strong really? here. Yes. Why don't you tell, because you know that the house that you're in now was for a time used to hold services for the Baptist Church. Tell that story. Well, I know that the, um, some members from Swansea Baptist Church decided that they want to start a church of their own. So they came up to um, well, this Captain Miles Pierce owned this house, and he was from Swansea, but he moved up to where I live now, and then they started their own little church, and they would have the services in my dining room. So these were people who had a difference of opinion with the people who were attending the Baptist church that's across from Hornbine yes. School, yes. And well, so you see, this, this Captain Miles Pierce, he had a big family. And all his family is uh, buried in the cemetery behind my house. Oh, yes. There's a wonderful old cemetery. Yes. He was Captain Miles Purse. He was a captain in the Army, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. They still come there now and put a flag on for Memorial Day. The town of Rehoboth does that. Are there other people buried in that cemetery? Besides well, all his heirs. But anybody else besides the Pierce, no. the Pierce family? No. No. All Pierce's, yeah. All right, go ahead. Tell how you... Mother? First of all, well, let's say how old your mother was when she came to America. My mother was 16 when she came to America. She went to live in Providence with a, an aunt and uncle who was supposed to have sponsored her. And they put her working in a, a factory putting tips on shoes. And uh, she didn't like it. So she told Mrs. Houghton, I don't like my job. I don't like it. And Mrs. Horton says, well, what do you want to do? And she says, I want to go on a farm. So she said, well, there's a gentleman that comes every week with his, he goes to Brown University with his eggs and his chickens. And he lives on Summer Street in Rehoboth. And he stops here and we buy, we buy eggs and chicken from him too. And I will tell him the story. So she tells Mr. Horton, I have a girl here that's not satisfied living here, and she wants to go on a farm. And he said, well, you have her ready next week, and I'll take her. So he picked her up, and he took her to Summer Street in Rehoboth, and she stayed there. 
And that's where she learned how to read and write and cook and clean floors. And uh, they had one daughter who was a teacher at the Little Red Schoolhouse in Rehoboth. And what was the daughter's name? Fanny Horton. Fanny Horton. Okay. And that's when my mother would uh, get up in the morning. She had an old Ford Fliver. I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it. And she'd get up in the morning and put the water in the radiator and crank it. And Fanny would go to school. And then when school was over in the afternoon, my mother would go down with the can of water and uh, fill the, the radiator up. Well, I think, the, I think the teacher, Fanny Horton, would, could let the water out so it wouldn't freeze. Then mother would go down with the water and put the thing on, turn it again, put the water in the radiator and crank the thing and come home. She'd ride home in the, with Fanny. And that's where she learned how to read and write. How did she learn? Um, did she come from the Azores? She came from the Azores. Azores. Um, did she come to this country knowing any English? No. So how did she learn to speak the language? By, in, in, with the well, family she, in Providence? With the, the, the family in, in Rehoboth. In Rehoboth. And she never, she never wanted to, everybody would say, your children don't t talk Port Portuguese. She said, no, because I'm in America and we, we're going to speak English. My mother never spoke Portuguese to us and never cooked Portuguese. All American foods. And, and this was the Horton Farm? Henry T. Horton on Summer Street. His farm is still there. I don't know who's in it. And it's near the, I don't know if you know the, th the th Thatchers at one time. There was a farm there that the, the Thatchers lived in, all on that same street. That was a name too in Rehoboth at one time. Mm -hmm. Oh, because Becky Thatcher, we have, we have, you know, the little journal of a girl by the name of Becky Thatcher. Mar Margaret Thatcher. Is it Margaret Thatcher? Margaret. Uh, uh, they called her Becky for short, but oh, her, they oh. called her Margaret. She's Margaret. I may have the name wrong. So all of a sudden, that's I making me realize that may be the same family. Or I, don't, I don't remember the girl's name. Okay. Oh, okay. But it may be the same, at least some member of that same family. So oh. you see, my mother was brought up. She forgot all about Portugal. Mm -hmm. And how did she meet your father? Well, that's another story. Tell it. Yeah. Well, my father had a, a racehorse and a buggy. And he used to uh, ride around town with his racehorse. So she told Mrs. Horton one day, she said, you know, there's a man goes by here with a horse and buggy. And she says, I like him. And uh, Mrs. Horton says, well, I'll see what I can do. There's a man in Rehoboth, Ralph Perry, that has a store. Mm -hmm. And he comes around with uh, uh, groceries. And of course, they bought groceries from him. So when he came, she told him, she says, there's a man that goes by here with a horse and buggy. And she says, my girl likes him. She says, can you send him here? So he said, oh, yeah. Well, they, he, they knew each other. My father was a McGann, Manuel McGann. So he sent a man there. And uh, my mother was hiding behind the door. And she saw the horse and buggy come in. And she says, oh, no, 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 me no like him. No, no, no. So Mrs. Horton says to Ralph, you sent the wrong guy. He says, oh, oh, well, there's another, there's another one there's by the name of Manuel. So he sent him, and that was it. So did they actually? Um... He used to come and take my mother out and take Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Horton and the Austin buggy to go to the church over here. To the congregational church? Yes. Here? And so Mr. and Mrs. Horton were along as uh, chaperones? I don't know. I don't think they worried about that in those days. It's also, I mean, I'll say while the tape is running, this idea of, um, we go back to Mr. Horton bringing um, uh, goods to Brown University, there's a long history of that. We have wonderful um, photographs of the vendors who would come to Brown University to sell their produce and so on. So. So I'm, t I'm telling things that are real. Oh, it's real. It's real. Yeah, absolutely.
Francis, we're going to talk a little bit about the farm that you came to in Rehoboth. Um, tell about a tractor that you remember. Did your father have a tractor early on? No, we did not. We had a horse and team. And so that they are the one, the horses and plowed the ground and so on. Can you remember when your father got his first tractor? Um, my brother, Clarence, got his first tractor in 1952. Can you remember anything else about it? Do you remember the brand? Do you remember what it Ford. was? Ford. It was a Ford. Bought it from Baker Tractor in Swansea. Mm -hmm. I remember that well, that, that business well. Tell about a little bit about the history of the land uh, where your father was farming. Do you know a little bit of the history of that place? Where we bought it from? Yes. Who it belonged to. Oh, it belonged to uh, Manuel Matthew P. Serpa, my father's uncle, and we, my father bought it from him because he passed away and left it to his wife, and she sold it to my father. Do you have any sense of how many acres uh, it is? Um, tw there's 23 acres. 23 acres. Wow, it's a big piece of land. How many generations in your family have worked that farm? It'd be your father, right? And, and Clarence, that's all. So a couple of generations, yeah. just those two generations. Was there any other farm nearby there on Hornbine Road? How about across the, the road there where there are horses today? Was that a farm across the Reese's. road? Reese's. Oh, Reese's, yes. But where the man has horses today, was that a farm? That's Reese's. That was Reese's yes, there? Yes, yes. I'm used to Reese's being further down in Swansea. No, that okay. was Reese's. And, um, well, I'll pay attention Reese's to Reese's dairy. Person. Okay. But the, the, father, the father would farm it before they became a dairy. Dairy, okay. And the question is, the next question is exactly what I was going to ask you. Tell what your farm was like, what animals you had, and what crops your father grew. Well, we had two horses, and we had a cow, and we had chickens. And we, uh, we raised vegetables. Can you remember some of those vegetables that were raised? Oh, potatoes, corn, peas, strawberries, squash, tomatoes. And um, it tell, I mean, uh, surely some of those vegetables and the fruit and so on were for your family, for family meals. But what did your father do with the um, excess that he had. Oh, he would take those to the uh, farmer's market in Providence. And tell about that because and that was an interesting trip that he took. He would load up the uh, wagon with the, the Prados and, and uh, we'd go uh, leave the farm at 8 o'clock at night, go all the way to Providence, get there at 1 and then he'd unload the products and then we'd start back home and get home 8 o'clock in the morning. Tell what road would you have traveled? I'm thinking about a team of horses at night. It's dark. What was the road? Is it Route 6 that we know today? No. Is it that, that? No, you go down Spring Street, cross over by the uh, fire barn, the South mm -hmm. Rehoboth fire yes. barn, down that street by Hass's farm, keep going uh, down the what used to be a chicken farm on that street. What was the name? What was is the it name? where Providence Street is today? Yes. Yes. Keep going and uh, go right down to... Um, In East Providence, it's like Baker's, that corner? Baker's, Baker's Corner. Corner. It, right into uh, uh, the city of Providence. Mm, over the bridge, over oh, one oh, of the old oh, bridges. Yes. Yeah. Um, what lit your way? How did you see the road? How? Well, they had lanterns on the truck, on the... Mm -hmm. on the wagon. wagon. Can you remember how long the trip took? Oh yes, sometimes we'd get so tired we'd say, I'd say, Dad, I'm tired. Well, get off and walk. <sighs> so we get off and run behind the wagon. Just run along, get exercise, and then he'd stop the horse. He'd, You're all right now? Then we get on. But Dad always sat there all the way. I don't know how we ever did it. Because we it, were young and mm -hmm. full of energy. Now, it's the early hours of the morning. Did you meet other people on the road? Not on this side, no. That's why I'm saying um, my farming was before Santos. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you get to Providence, and what would happen? You'd unload, on the, you'd unload everything. Mm -hmm. 
and then you'd, they'd write it all down. And then at the end of the month, my mother would have to go to Providence and with the slip, and then they would pay her. Very interesting. And how often was, was that trip made every week or just? No, once no, a month. Once a month. I'm sure it was very exciting to go to the oh, big yeah. city of Providence. Yeah. Um, do you still farm like your father? And like Clarence? Well, um, um, Clarence and I did, but uh, the last seven years, Clarence didn't do no more farming. No, but... So I raised my own garden. And I have a, a, a hay. I, I have people come and cut my hay. I got big hay fields. Tell what you grow today, because I've had a, oh, the wait, opportunity I, to sample grow, some of those things. I grow everything but in a small quantity. Sweet potatoes, carrots beans, potatoes, lettuce, anything that, but in a small quantity for my, for me to freeze or for my son to have. Because my son comes down every weekend from uh, his home. He lives in Wakefield, up near Boston. And in fact, he's in, he works in IBM. He's the world salesman for IBM. And he comes every weekend and gardens, plants with his mother and hoes, because he doesn't want his mother to do it all by herself. It's, it's amazing that you can still do it, and I've sampled some and of I the And I mow my own things. lawn. It yeah. takes me four hours to mow my lawn. It's a big, it's a big piece of land. With a riding mower. Yeah, I know your father took produce and went into Providence. Did you ever have a farm stand locally where you sold things? No. How about eggs? Did you sell eggs? Well, my brother had an egg business. Mm -hmm. He used to sell eggs. Mm -hmm. But he would send them to market, Brockton Market. Mm -hmm. And the cow that you had was just for you for milk for the family? Milk, yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mother used to make all the butter, and she would sell it to the neighbors. Oh, yes, tell about that. Yes, that's right. You told me that. Yeah. What yeah. would she use to make the butter? Well, uh, she would strain the milk when Dad would, used to come in with a big pail of milk the top and she would set pans out she would bring them to a, a little bit of a heat not much and then she'd set them in the closet and they, they would form a skim of uh, cream and then she had a thing that with a creamer with little holes that would separate the cream from the milk she put it in a pan and then put it in the ice box to keep it cool and when she had a pan full of that cream she'd make her butter in a churn in a churn you have to churn would it be a churn like this yes did you, was it ever your job to work that Oh, term? yeah, we used to do it. She drank the buttermilk. We couldn't stand the buttermilk, Clarence and I. She <laughs> loved the buttermilk. And then she would go down the road and sell them to the, to the ladies. How did she shape the butter? Was it just in a ball? Yes. Yes. Um, and she, she braided a lot of rugs. My mother made a lot of ra rugs, big ones, too. She used to sell them. Rag rugs? Yes. Now, did she have her own rags, or did a rag man no, come? No, she had company that would come from Fall River and would bring them her old clothes. And she would rip them apart, you know, and hang them on the line to get them clean. That's how she kept busy. Never, I, never went to a movie or anything. I think your mother was always busy from the stories I know. Uh, Frances's mother did more things to help her family than... Uh, than I can imagine having time in a day to do. Um, how about your father's supplies? When he needed supplies for the farm, did he get them in Fall River, in Providence? Where did he go? Oh, uh, he went to, Pro uh, to Fall River. That's what I saw uh, Pierce Hardware mm -hmm. up on 2nd Street in Fall River. And he he used to order everything from there, seed and stuff. Mm -hmm. My mother and I, we used to go get it, come home with our shopping bags. Mm -hmm. Did you take the bus, the trolley, or did you? Oh, uh, we'd walk down to Lovett Stower and take the trolley into Fall River. Yes, Francis tells about taking the trolley from Lovett Store, and we talked about this the other day. How long a walk is that from your house? about five miles. Yes. And sometimes you'd miss the trolley. Sometimes miss the trolley, and we'd go up through, uh, um, what's that other street after you pass the village? Gardner's Nick Road? No, or? no, not Gardner's Nick Road. Going up by the Somerset Water Tower. Mm. Well, today it's Route 6, right? G-A-R no, Highway. This, no, it's this side of Route 6. Oh, Francis, I don't know. But I, I know where the, the tower is. I don't know the name of the road. I can't but, think of it. No. 
And where was Lovitz? Lovitz, it's right where Joseph Case High School was. Okay. So to walk from Hornbine Road almost to the Swansea line down, it's a long way. You have to go all the way down to Miss Dutton's. Miss Dutton's. And then that's the end of Hornbine Road, and you're walking Hortonville Road all the way down to Swansea Village, to Main Street in Swansea. It's a long way. And I'm sure there were very few houses. Oh, yes, I know. It would, it would be a long walk with not much going on in between. Um, in terms of the farm, what kind of chores did you and Clarence have as children? What were you expected to do on a well, daily we, basis? Well, we expected to pull weeds and pick strawberries. Hard work for a child. And then as I grew older, from when out of high school and I learned to cook, I used to do all the cooking because my mother worked on the farm. Mm -hmm. um, some of the fun things you did as a child? Fun things that I did as a child was when the Hornbine Baptist Church would have uh, little times, suppers, mm -hmm. and they would take, once I remember they hired a bus and took us to a, a amusement park. Did, and, was it Lincoln Park, do you think? I, I don't, that I couldn't say. They used to take us to Lincoln Park. Or maybe like to Crescent Park, maybe more toward Providence or East Providence Crescent Park. I'm trying to think where you would And have then gone. they would have games. The, the game that I remember was you'd pick up the peanuts on a, on a knife and try to go over there and put them in a heap. And if you got more peanuts than the other ones, you'd get a prize. Maybe a little box of candy. You know those little boxes of candy with a string on it you used to get years ago? I don't know. You no. don't know? What kind of candy was it? Hard no. candy. Hard candy? Oh, I'm sure an outing like that for a child who's living and working hard on a farm, I'm sure that was very exciting. Oh, I know. I know. The ocean, did you ever go to the beach? Uh, when the, the Reese Stoa, mm -hmm. well, when Myron Reese and his uh, first wife, they used to take us to Ocean Grove. Oh, of course, right. And I'm sure that was exciting too. Those yeah, the days they'd pack a lunch and take us in mm -hmm. their little old truck. Clarence and I. Mm. Very exciting. Very nice. Um, what was the chore that you disliked doing the most? Would it be weeding? What, what? Yeah, I didn't like to pull weeds. <laughs> Nobody likes to pull weeds, but you have to do it, don't you? Um, do you remember? Did the horses have names? Yes. Do you remember what they the, were? The white one was Fanny, and uh, what, what the, there was a brown one, Chubb. Now, were they strictly work horses, or yes. were you able to ride them? No, no, they, no, I never rode horses unless my father was cultivating, and I wanted, I'd get on the horse and ride, but I did a little bit of cultivating, but we never rode anything for for just joy. for fun, yeah, just for joy. Um, Tell what a farm day was like. Let's pretend it's a summer day and maybe you're eight or nine years old. What's it like on a farm? Do you, does everyone get up and get going before the sun is even up? Oh, my mother and father, Clarence and I, would be the last ones. Mm -hmm. And when they got up before daylight, what were they up and well, up to do? Well, you'd have to do the barn chores and milk the cow. And my mother, would, if she had to go out, she'd go out in the field. She'd try to get her washing done. and clean the house before she went out. Was her washing all done by hand or did she have some kind of like a no, we, ring, ringer, washer? No, or? we had an, uh, a, a, a tub and it had a handle and the, the thing was on a handle like shaped like that mm -hmm. and you'd go up and down in the tub like that. Mm -hmm. And so it was really hard, and hang it on the line. hard work. Water, was there running water in the house or did you have to go to a well? No, there was no running water in the house. We used to bring it to the, from the well. Can you, the running I, water came late. I was gonna say, can you remember how old you were when electricity came? About two. So that would be like in 1922, 1923. How about how old you were when you had the first telephone at your house? Uh, I think we had the telephone about about the same time we had the electricity, because okay. all the wires came at the same time. How about indoor plumbing, Francis? What, no, did you we, use we, an outhouse? No, we had an outhouse. 
Can you remember when the first uh, bathroom came into the house? Do you remember how old you were? Uh, no. We never had a bathroom in the house. But at some point, bathrooms were put in that house. Uh, no, they was never put in that house where I lived. Lived, oh, but we right. had, but we had uh, Mr. Case's house had everything in it, mm. and we were, we were in and out all the time over there. We could use the bathroom. We could mm -hmm. shower. We could. Mm -hmm. They they liked us. Well. Oh, there was a lot to like. There was a lot to like. Why was your father a farmer? Was it what he knew best? Yes. Well, he was asthmatic, and uh, it, he had to be on the out in the air. Mm -hmm. And so it was the kind of work that yes. he knew. And I'm sure your mother, coming from the Azores, probably the reason she wanted to be leave Providence and come to the farm, it's what she knew yeah. as well. Yes, I was thinking when you were telling that story. Um, what did you like the best about living on a farm? What was the best part? Well, all the company would come and we'd have great old times. Tell about those old times. What was a good old time? Well, I can remember that where we used to take our products into town, there was an Italian family, and they would come uh, all the time, and they bring the spaghetti and the meatballs and we, and uh, the dessert. And we, and my mother would make the shortcake, and we clean the strawberry. We used to have a good time, laugh and talk, and have a good time. That's when Buddy Cianci used to come. I remember Buddy Cianci and Nickus. Are you serious? I'm positive. Buddy Cianci used to come out. He to used to come with his mother and his aunt and his uh, uh, his uncle by marriage. Yes. Oh yes. You're holding out on me. I've never heard this story. And oh I remember goodness. when Buddy went to the well because we had the well with the crank, mm -hmm. and he let the crank go, and oh, was lucky he didn't get hurt. Because he had to investigate what was going around the farm. Oh, my goodness. When you would have these gatherings or get-togethers, did anybody bring an accordion, a fiddle? Was there ever any uh, music? Well, my mother played the guitar, Portuguese guitar. Mm. And my father played the American, the strummer. Yeah. The, the one you know, you, the bass. Yeah. And so what kind of songs did they play? Well, um, my mother would play some of the Portuguese songs. And, uh, and my father would follow, like, you know, make the bass sound. Mm-hmm. Kind of the beat, the rhythm. Yeah, I still, the got the, the, I still got the banjos. And Do you really? Yes. Did you and Clarence ever learn to play? Clarence tried. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. So would people dance when they played? No, we'd sing and laugh and tell jokes. Now, I, I, I'm not even... Uh, something else is occurring to me. Did you grow grapes? Yes. And did, you, did your parents make wine? No, my mother would make jam. So there wasn't wine? No, we, no. Not, we, we weren't anything for liquor. So nobody no. drank alcohol or whatever? No. Do you remember making lemonade? Uh, making root beer. Making, tell how you did that. Well, I don't remember making it. I remember my mother making it. What did she use? What? I don't know how she made it. I remember one year she made it and put it downstairs in the bottles, and I don't think she, I think she put too much yeast, and the next thing we know, the pops were going off and the beer was going all over the place. <laughs> do you remember, besides your beer, like, do you remember, like, sarsaparilla and old-fashioned sodas like no. that? No. No? We never had sodas. Uh, lemonade? Did you make lemonade? No. No? But she made root beer. Oh, I wish we knew how she did that. All right. Um... All right, give me a minute here to just look, since I'm not familiar with these questions. Well, a lot of these things we have talked about. Oh, do you think that your mother brought um, things that she knew about farming from the Azores and used those techniques or those um, things that she knew here in this country? No, I don't think so. Why do you think she didn't make Portuguese food? Why didn't she make the food? Because she, she wanted to be an American. And that meant even, but even the Italian family came and they brought their meatballs and pasta. Well, that's okay, but she just wanted to be. She was brought up, brought up with Mr. and Mrs. Horton, who were, were Americans, mm -hmm. taught her everything that she knew American, and that's what she wanted. 
because when over in Portugal, she had nothing. Oh, I know the families that came came because they were very poor and were hoping for a better life here. Um, oh my goodness. Mm. Oh, this is this is an interesting question. Tell about the farm in terms of the seasons. Obviously, we know from spring through fall, it's planting, it's weeding, it's cultivating, uh, harvesting, and so on. What was the farm like in the winter? What do you remember? Well, I, they would uh, cut wood and stack the wood because you had the wood stoves. Mm -hmm. Then you would cut brush to keep the brush down uh, along the wall. Mm -hmm. Were there stone walls? Yes. Did your father have to spend time repairing those? Did those? No. No, no they never ever fell down. And anyway, they're more artistic now. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, how about repairing equipment? Did he use the winter months to repair yes, equipment? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You would oil all the equipment with old oil to keep them from rusting. Do you remember big blizzards, big snowstorms? Yes. Tell, tell what a day like that might be like. Francis. I remember the blizzard that my boy was, uh, I think he was uh, six years old, and it was out right up over his head. We used to climb the woodshed and stand on the top and jump in the... In the snow bank. Yeah. And I remember when my mother and father and uh, Clarence and I would shovel the, my driveway to get out. That big, long driveway? Yes, yes, yes. Do it by hand. And I'm sure, even if there was a lot of snow, the animals had to be tended and so on. Does it seem to you, because I think a lot of people your age say this, does it seem to you when you were young that there was much more snow than we yes, have today? Yes, and much colder. And much colder? Oh, I'd be skating by Thanksgiving. Where did you go skating? Well, there was a pond down in the, in the, in the field. Mm -hmm. I used to skate on that. I remember the first pair of skates I had with the two runners. Mr. Case bought them for me, and you'd have to strap them on with the straps, and I'd go down and skate on the pond. Strap them over your shoes. Yeah. How about sledding? Did you have a sled? Yes, I had a sled. You'd go up on the hill and slide down on the sled. So is this on the farm? There was enough of a hill somewhere There was the a farm? hill on across the street, yeah. And you could, so sledding, skating, wow, very good. Um, how would you say the technology of farming has changed? What do you think is the biggest change from when you were a little girl to now? What is the biggest change, say, in equipment or in the way farming is no, done? No, equipment and, and some of the farming. They're more or less going to organic now. This is true, but I I'm, bet your father would, was an organic farmer. He probably didn't use a lot oh, of... Well, he didn't, he didn't use... Uh, he, Manure from the from the horses. Right. He'd spread that in the fall, and then turn it over for the spring. You and I talk about this because we talk about our respective farms, mine much smaller than yours, um, about the difficulty we have with insects and bugs and so on. Do you remember that as a child? Do you remember that that was an issue? No, there wasn't that much when I was a kid. But you and I talk about it, if the winters were much colder, a lot of those insects were killed yeah. in the course of a winter. These years, we don't have enough cold weather and um, enough snow. Um, what do you think about your farm? You're 90 now, or will be, and um, what do you envision for your farm uh, after you are I don't know. not here. Do you think that someone I will... I don't know, and I don't want to think about it. All right. We won't think about it. Why don't you at least... I think my son is, will take over. And Francis has a grandson. Do you think Jonathan will be interested in the farm? I don't know. I hope so. He spends a lot of time with Francis uh, these days. We should tell at least about Molly because in the last few years, how many years did you have Molly? Molly was uh, Francis's Eight. cow. Eight years. My granddaughter went to uh, um, Bristol Aggie and uh, she was um, in the um, farming pot with the cattle and she had a chance to buy this little jersey so she bought it and brought it down to me to take care of it. and I had it for eight years. Her name was Molly. She ate everything.
cakes. Francis fed her everything. <laughs> cookies, candy, everything. Vegetables. She ate everything. She was a very um, well cared and, for cow. And no matter where she was, all I had to holler and she would come running. You would think it was the uh, train coming up through the pasture. She, the ground would shake. <laughs> I finally had to get rid of her. I didn't want her, but I had to. Well, it was getting too much for me. A lot of work. It was hard last winter when we had a lot of Well, snow. last winter really did it. Because mm. I'd be out at 10 o'clock at night shoveling a path to the, so I could get to the barn in the morning. To get the path lower, you know. The One of the questions, we've talked about um, uh, blizzards and so on. One of the questions that's here, Francis, do you remember the hurricanes of 1938, Yes, 1954? I remember the hurricane of 1938. I was walking home from Mrs. Swanson's house. I had just gone down to help her do her housework, and I started home. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Okay, now hold. So did Mrs. Swanson live on Hornbine Road? Yes. On the um, corner of Spring and Hornbine. So if you'll never forget it. First, what was her first name? Grace. Grace Swanson. Tell, tell what it was like if you'll never forget it, because I think people who lived through that hurricane say the same, but. Oh, the trees were cracking, all, but I didn't realize it was a hurricane. I don't think anybody did. It came so fast. The trees were cracking all down around me, and it, I remember getting home, and my mother was so happy I got home, and I remember sitting in the living room and I saw my pear tree go down, mm -hmm. break. And I remember that. It was terrible. People talk about the color of the sky. Do you remember if the sky people was dark? Talk? Yes. And, um, and that the wind sounded like a oh, train. Oh, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. How long did the storm last? Can you remember? Uh, well, I really couldn't say. It came very fast. I know the hurricane of 1938 traveled very, very fast, but was so destructive. How about 1954? Because even I remember that. I was a little girl, and I was with my grandmother. Do you remember that hurricane? Yes, I remember that. Uh, that um, I, my little boy was, um, he was born in 51. He was three years old. Mm. I remember that. Him and I were alone, and we saw everything going, flying all over the place. My husband was working for... Dutton's at the time. Was he in Providence? No, it was in Swansea. In Swansea. Miss Dutton. So d was he able to get back home before the storm was over? Mm, uh, I think he got back home. I think he walked home. Oh, my goodness. Because there was, things were all over the road. Mm. Yeah, it's long before all of these things were forecasted. Did, it, did those hurricanes, I mean, I know trees were lost and so on. Did it affect the farm in any other way? Did you lose animals? No, no, we didn't lose anything. We lost electricity and yes. had to wait, wait, and wait. Yes, for a very long time, I'm sure. Um, we've talked about power. When, oh, when was Hornbine Road paved? Do you remember? Well, I don't remember dirt. Even when you were walking to school, you think uh -huh. it was paved? Yes. I think it might have been that only part of Hornbine Road was paved, though. Was was paid the, to the school? Paved to the school, yes, because I think um, the northern end was still a dirt road for a time. Um, and just tell again, who were your neighbors, the most immediate neighbors for where you were living? It was the Reeses. Yeah, and Alfred C. Case. Okay. Uh, Grace Swanson. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Mr. and Mrs. William Packer, Virtue Airy, Mr. Goodyear, and um, Louise Baker, Lizzie Cole's sister. Lizzie Cole's sister, yes. And we should say Lizzie Cole is the Baker family that gave the land yeah. for Hornbine School. And just in case we don't have it on this tape, could you again tell the names of your, your father, mother, Grandfather, grandmother, great-grandfather, any of those names that you know, and also the names of your children, so that we have the genealogy on tape? Let's start with your children, and we'll work back. So the names of your two children? Raymond L. Jones, Jr., Mary Lou Drown. Okay. Tell the name of your husband again, too. Raymond L. Jones. Okay. And then your mother's name? Mary Codmore, again. And your father? Manuel McGann, Jr. Okay, now do you remember further back here? 
grandmother, grandfather? Uh, my grandmother was uh, Annie, McGann, Annie Serpa McGann. And my grandfather was Manuel Sousa McGann. And uh, my great, great, my great, great grandfather was Manuel R. Serpa. And his wife was Mary Serpa. No, I don't. I I don't think I could say it. 